Right, g'day guys. In this video, we're going to look at how to construct a very simple 3D model. In this uh, particular video, this will be video one, we will look at how to construct uh, this basic model here. Um, and then in video two, we'll look at how to create a layout for it and to show it in its various different views with a small title block. All right, so let's get a, go ahead to uh, AutoCAD and we're going to open it up. And when you get onto AutoCAD, it's going to look like this. It should be already in the following. If I go down to my settings here, it should be in drafting annotation. But in order to uh, construct a 3D model and to work with the, the commands within the 3D uh, framework of AutoCAD, we want to make sure that we change this to uh, modeling, 3D modeling, right? So that's the first thing we want to do. The next thing we want to do is type in the word units, enter. We want to make sure that we are on type decimal, precision to a whole number. And instead of inches, in terms of our units, uh, units to scale, we want to make it millimeters. And then we want to press OK. And now we are ready to go in terms of whatever input we put in terms of distances into AutoCAD, it will, it will um, render that as uh, millimeters to a one is to one scale. Right, so let's go back now to the picture or the model that we're going to create. We have simple objects to look at here to build this up. We have a, a rectangular prism base of 100 by 60 with a 15 height. We have a cylindrical prism, okay, above and centered on top of the base at 45 high with a 54 diameter. And then we have a, um, a little hole through the, through the middle of that cylinder, so also positioned on the center, center to center, with a size of 30 by 30, so it's a square exactly. Right, and we would assume that this hole would, would run the depth of the cylinder and stop at the base so that it can be used or for positioning poles or guiding uh, poles. All right, so we're going to start with the base and we're going to work in the top view first and we're going to use the two dimensions of 160. So I'm going to go to a rectangular command, which you'll see in the draw section of your ribbon. So we're going to go click and move. Now, if your mouse hogs a little bit, just be a bit patient because 3D, 3D modeling does take a little bit, absorb a little bit more of your, your, your CPU power in your PC. So we're going to go 100, comma, 60, enter. 100, comma, 60, enter. And now that is going to be the size of the base of your model, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the, in the top view, and the, we're going to add in the circle diameter off the center marking. So we know we've got that cylinder on top. But before we do that, I want to just take you to this little 3D snap cursor, which I haven't got activated and you will need. So we want to click that on. We want to ensure that we have perpendicular, not center to face, midpoint, and vertex. Right, now that we've got our snaps on, our uh, uh, 3D modeling snaps on, we're going to go to a, uh, sorry, we're going to get that circle again. We're going to go position it um, in the middle here so we can highlight along this point and this point. It should give us the middle. So let's make sure we've got all of that on. That seems to be good. Right. So there it is. Let's go get the circle command. Now it should give us the center of the rectangle. For some reason, I'm not able to get that. And we'll quickly troubleshoot that. Right, so if you're like me and you're not getting those um, snaps, you want to be making sure that these are all on. Now, this would be your two dimensional, well, your 2D snaps, right? Make sure that all of those are on, except for parallel. We're going to drop that menu back down. This then should give us all the information we require, okay, or the intelligence of CAD. So we're going to make a circle. I'm going to go, there we go. So you'll see it picks up the center point. I'm going to go put my cursor on the center point, click. Open the circle up. Now, what is the diameter? So if we quickly have a look at the picture, it'll stay in that command, even though I changed my window. We've got 54. Now, at the moment, it's, um, it's recognizing you'll see a radius, not a diameter. But if I go down to the bottom here, it says D in blue for diameter. If I type in D and press enter, it will now ask me for a diameter. So I'm going to type in 54 and I'm going to hit enter. Great. So now they are positioned center to center, but they are lying flat on a two-dimensional plane. So I'm going to click on southwest. And now I can start to manipulate this with some, and give it some volume to create a three-dimensional shape. 
And I'm going to use the command press pull. So either you can type, click it or type in press pull and it will automatically bring that command up. Now the base of this is 15. So I'm going to click the rectangular base. I'm going to pull it up and type in 15 enter. Now we know that the circle does not actually sit, position itself on the bottom. It sits on top of the base. So you can either move it up, but I'm just going to leave it there and I'm going to do the following. I'll be smart with my, cal my calculations. It's 45 in height, but we have it positioned at the bottom. So we're going to go 45 plus 15. That's going to give us 60. So we're going to press pull this a total of 60 up. And that will give us the height we are required for that cylindrical object. Now in this position, before we create the hole, what we need to do is um, make this one solid object. Because look, if I click on it, you'll see they, they're all one a different object. Okay? We want to click on one of them and, highlight, and, and have AutoCAD recognize it as a solid object. So we're going to take our cursor, we're going to highlight the whole thing, click, release, and drag, and then click again. And then we're going to type in, in fact, we're not going to click release and drag, that's, I apologize for that, we're going to type in the word union. Now what union does is it combines solid objects together. So now I highlight and I press enter. Now you'll see it's created one object out of the two. So I click the one and it has recognized them as two. And very cleverly, what AutoCAD has done is it's separated this from the top. It's recognized that the cylinder stops on top of the base. And we're going to delete that. We don't need it. Now, if you want to have a quick look at what this looks like from a conceptual uh, frame uh, in terms of a real, sort of give it some texture and shading, that's what it looks like. And you can play around with these settings. That's what we would call realistic. Uh, look like metal. Um, I often used to, I like, quite like using x-ray because it gives um, both the lines as well as a little bit of solid fill. Whilst we're working, however, we want to stay in the 2D frame. Um, and the last thing we need to do here is we need to add the square hole down the middle. And I'll show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to take the rectangle or square command and I'm going to type in, click at a point. We're going to stay in the 3D. We don't have to do a top view here. And I'm going to go 30 by 30 because that is the full dimension for the square. I'm then going to click and press enter, right? And what we want to, sorry, I want to click and, and then type in move. No, that's not working. So we're going to type in move, enter, click on the square, and then press enter again. Grab the center point and go move it up to find the center of the circle. And what you can do is just rotate around the edge of that circle, and then you'll see it highlights the, the little uh, cursor in the middle. And there we have it. We've got the square on top. Now that is just a two-dimensional layer, and we want to create depth to that. So what I'm going to do is click on it, or I'm going to type and press, pull, right? Grab this, pull it down, and instead of, for example, typing in 45, we know it's, it will be a height of 45 because it should then stop at the base. I'm just going to drag my mouse cursor over to the corner there, and it automatically creates a 45, um, the, the depth of 45. Right, now what I'm going to do is go and have a look at it, what it looks like in a realistic sense. Now you see that's not a hole. We've just got information. So we've got one solid within another solid. So now we're going to use a new command. We're going to use a command we call subtract. But first I want to go do a wireframe because I want to be able to select each part by selecting an edge. Okay, so I'm going to go subtract, type in subtract. There it is. If you need it, you, if you want to use the icon, you can just go up here and click solid subtract at the top. And what I'm going to do now, in order to subtract this, we are in the command because we've hit enter. We're going to select the object we want to remain and then select the object we want to remove. The object we want to remain here is the base and the cylinder. And then the, the, the section we want to remove to create the hole is the square prism. So we're going to go click on the solid we want to keep. Right, enter. Then we're going to go to the prism we want to remove, the hole we want to create, click and then press enter. Now if we go to realistic, we should have a hole down the middle. And if I hold my middle cursor, my mouse cursor, um, and I move this, sorry, shift, and my, my mouse cursor, you can see the hole in the middle. I'm going to come back to the southwest view to position it in the isometric. Now we have created uh, the perfect 3D model according to the information we're given. So this is the end of video tutorial number one. And the next video tutorial will look at how we can create a layout, an orthographic layout, 
um, in um, our layouts tab at the bottom here. All right, so well done on this, this uh, part of the, the process.